Right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Good evening, everyone, and welcome inside the Fan Cave. This is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Call us on the Bordas and Bordas hotline. It's 412-575-2600. You can also hit us up on Twitter at KD Pomp, at Chris Muller, PGH. Chris is over at 93.7, the fan of spending the day up at training camp. Uh, it's winding down, Chris. This was the next to the last practice. Tomorrow's the final one before they turn things over to the south side next week in a short game against Atlanta. But first up, it's Buffalo on Saturday. And I'm curious, your expectations of what you may see on Saturday in that game. Do you expect uh, you know, more regulars to play or not? Yeah, I think that first team offense is still going to go out there. Certainly the offensive line. I think that even though Kenny Pickett and company got pretty much an A-plus for their one drive uh, in the first preseason game uh, against Tampa, I think that the Steelers should want to see them more, get them out in front of the home crowd, maybe get two series. If it's another flawless one, maybe you consider just leaving it at one. But I think on defense too, Bob, you're also going to see a lot of defensive backfield combinations. I think they really want to get a long look in this game at Joey Porter Jr. since he didn't play against Tampa. Uh, yeah, I expect to see starters on both sides of the ball I suspect it'll be more like certain individuals on defense might play a longer time than you would expect. Uh, in offense, I would think, what, maybe a quarter if things are going kind of normally. If they do a flawless job, though, offensively, I could see yanking everybody out of there pretty quickly. Yeah, if we get to start it, we saw the other day in Tampa, I would agree with that. But um, this will be a good, you know, they like to do, if they're going to do anything, it's in this game, at home especially, it's the second of three a short week. I don't expect much in Atlanta whatsoever, except – you know, battles for the final roster spots or, or what have you. But George Pickens has, you know, been <laughs> terrific. And he did another one today. He was made a nice catch fending off James Pierre, who has had his, you know, issues. But he also, I thought, can't be blamed for a touchdown pass that happened last week in that game. He took a lot of uh, heat for, you know, that game. But that play specifically, I thought was a good pass by Baker Mayfield. However, George Pickens continues to make plays, which has prompted a lot of people to think he's going to emerge as one of these elite five uh, receivers. Ryan Clark said so today, and I asked Patrick Peterson after practice today, and he pretty much, you know, the quote from Ryan, I guess, was that he felt that Pickens had as much, if not more, talent than Justin Jefferson, who was the league leader in yards last year in his fourth season. So Peterson tended to agree, but he said it's, it's how you – you know, set up your route running. And, and, and he called uh, P, uh, Jefferson a savant in how he does that. And that's one thing that George Pickens has to do more of, obviously, in just his second season. Well, think about the guys who are – Clark just straight up said George Pickens has more natural talent uh, than Justin Jefferson. I think he also – somebody else on that ESPN show that Clark was on called him a route running savant as well. Think about this, though, Bob. We know those college ties run real deep, right? That's two LSU guys saying that a third LSU guy isn't as good as a Georgia guy. Do you understand how good they must think Pickens is talent-wise to actually say that? Uh, but the, the truth there is he has all the talent and physical ability in the world. I think he's right there in terms of raw athletic ability, certainly football talent with any receiver in the game. And I think two things are going to determine just how good he is. How good is Kenny Pickett throwing him the ball? And how refined does George Pickens get on all the little things that Justin Jefferson has been doing basically since moment one in the NFL. If he dots his I's and crosses his T's and Kenny Pickett is anywhere close to what people hope he can be, George Pickens is going to have massive numbers for a very long time. I would agree with that, but I also have some other guys on that team who would like to have the ball. We saw a lot from Calvin Austin last week. He gives you the, uh, the speed factor that you know, not many people on that team have. And, of course, Deontay Johnson, uh, if he gets the ball in strike and do some things, not to even mention the talented wide receiving core. But to me, though, Chris, it all starts with pass protection. If you're going to have a successful passing game, you better make sure you protect the quarterback. And last year he got hit a few times and suffered two concussions. I think that's first and foremost. Yeah, it is. I think Kenny Pickett can also be better at protecting himself both. Uh, I mean, I think Tua Tonga-Vailoa was taking Brazilian jiu-jitsu to figure out how to fall correctly. <laughs> I know Pickett, I think Friermuth too, uh, are wearing those helmets designed to mitigate the risk or help lessen the risk of concussions. Uh, Kenny's got to be judicious in how he breaks the pocket. 
He's also, it's kind of paradoxical, but he's also got to be calmer in the pocket. He has to trust the protection when it is there because sometimes when you break free and try to run is when you can take some big hits instead of when you're standing stationary mm -hmm. and things maybe just kind of collapse in on you. Uh, but, yeah, he has to be a lot more careful. They have to be better. I think one of the interesting stories of camp, I'm sure you would agree, is that Dan Moore Jr. just has not ceded that left tackle job to Broderick Jones. And this pained me to hear as a big Broderick Jones backer, but Brian Baldinger said there's a lot to work on for the rookie. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that was going to either happen or not happen. If he came in and just blew everyone away, he'd be the starter. I think we're going to see a lot of him again against Buffalo. You'll see the game on KDK. It's a 6.30 kickoff. Oh, special time. Mark that down. We'll continue this conversation with Chris as we continue. Call us with your thoughts at 412-575-2600. This is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call, and we do it every single night of the week right here on Pittsburgh CW and simulcast on 93.7 The Fan.